Whatever people say, you know, it cannot be going very well for Prince Harry and his bid to try and close down the press, you know, whichever way you want to look at it, over here in the United Kingdom. As we all know, Prince Harry's going into litigation with, I think, around about six different separate cases, all about the terrible situation that is endured throughout his life regarding the British media. As we saw only last month, he took to the stand over here in the High Court and according to David Furnish, Elton John's bag carrier, the bottom line was, well, you know, he was happy with his performance. Well, seemingly now, obviously his QC, or should we say KC, <laughs> keep forgetting that, you know, David Sherbourne, well, apparently thought he did well too. But there's now quite a few problems. You see, the problem with Prince Harry was he couldn't really put together any concrete evidence. It was all speculative, you know. There were certain bits that you could attribute to the fact that, yes, there is no doubt in no uncertain terms that the paparazzi back in the day would have been chasing around Chelsea Davy and indeed Prince Harry. But let's not also forget that when you look at um, later on and you see pictures like this, who on earth got these pictures without being tipped off? There's no two ways about it. Meghan Markle, when she came onto the scene, knew thoroughly how to manipulate the media, making sure that they got the pictures of Harry's brand new fiance. And as we saw in that book by Tom Bauer, Revenge, even she then started to balk exactly about how things had panned out with that big spread with Vanity Fair. You see what I mean? I'm just wild about Harry playing their game, but when it doesn't suit them, they're not happy. And this is now the bigger problem for Prince Harry. You see, he claimed in evidence that basically we, but people like myself, get invited to do deals with senior members of the British monarchy, royals. And the bottom line also with that is that we apparently are invited to informal press parties where we align ourselves and decide exactly what we're going to write, what we're going to agree with, all of that sort of stuff absolute nonsense. It just does not happen. In all of the years that I've been reporting on things like this, yes, I've been to Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle, etc., many different times, but you're not told what to write. They hope that you'll be favourable, naturally so, and you would give them the courtesy of that. Why would you go if you weren't particularly interested? But to say that we're in the pocket of the senior monarchy is ridiculous. Now, one of the biggest people to backlash this is none other than the owner of News UK and, of course, other major sort of media outlets around the world, Rupert Murdoch, who's basically just jumped on this and said, doesn't happen. We do not get told what to write or print. Now, when you think about the backlash that Rupert and co have had over the last few years, one could believe that they've risked a lot, paid a lot out in litigation. But once again, this paints Prince Harry and his security bid in a very bad light against the British media. Simply because when you have such a magnet like that coming out and saying, well, show me the proof, where has that happened? And let's not forget, you know, Prince Harry's mother, Princess Diana, regularly turned up at the staff Christmas party for the sun and the news of the world to wish them well. That happened on more than one occasion. And that's simply because she knew the value of keeping the press on side, worked alongside them on many occasions, and seemingly Harry being only 12 years old, when she sadly demised, he wouldn't know this. But Prince William would, but then he fell out with him. And this is the problem now that Harry has. He's been fed stories that he believes are true, even if he can't remember them himself. Neil Sean, Westminster, London.